What's up, divas and divos? You already know what time it is. It's your girl. We're about to do this real talk today. Really quick. Well, not really quick. I don't even know why I said that because if it was really quick, bitch, it will be really fucking quick. Okay. So this is Real Talk Wednesday, you guys. And today is no makeup day. Like, seriously, um, I just really didn't feel like it. Like, I was going to get up today. Okay, let, let me tell you my plans for the day so that you guys know that I just don't want to do my makeup because I'm being lazy. So this is my plans for today, but we're going to start off with the plans yesterday, okay? So yesterday, I um, did my makeup, and um, me and Mumsy, we did a Dollar Tree video, okay? So we did our Dollar Tree video, and I also felt like this. Well... And I had this wig on because um, this is just the wig that I really do like, which is from Best Lace Wigs, okay? And you guys have seen it on me last week and the week before that. There is a video up on it. Um, but anyway, so, and I did just sell one that looks very similar, but not similar. Like, this one is a little bit more looser. But anyway, so, um, and I love this wig. So, I had the wig on, and you know, I put it on with mousse and hairspray. So, when I put it on yesterday... I just put it on for the video, for the Dollar Tree video, and I did my makeup. And then I was like, you know what? I should do a couple of wig videos today. But then I said to myself, self, you just put that wig on with hairspray and mousse. Bitch, why would you want to take it the fuck off? Like, I do that, though, in videos. When I'm, like, doing a, an abundance of videos, I record an abundance of videos in a day, I do also do that. I remove the wig, which can be annoying at times. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to do the wig videos on Tuesday, which is really Tuesday today. You know what I'm saying? Tomorrow will be Wednesday. So, I, you know, I get the real talk ready the day before. So I said, okay, so I will put my makeup on Tuesday morning after I went on my exercise walk and did my exercise. And I will do my real talk. Plus, I'll do my wig video review from my first wigs, which is this light colored bob. And I'll do like a synthetic wig video and another synthetic wig video. So I had plans on doing Real Talk and three wig videos. But then I said to myself today, self, oh, excuse me, five wig videos because I made two wigs too. And it came out really good. So it was either like maybe like three. I might be exaggerating some, maybe like three or four. So I said to myself, self, you have to edit a video for real talk you have to upload finish uploading a video for today meaning tuesday so you don't have time for that shit so you're not gonna do your makeup so i just felt like you know what i got too much other shit to be doing to be recording some other videos plus i'll be feeling like this i work so hard and i do so many videos and then i, I stay up late and then i edit them and stuff like that and it's like why am I even doing this anymore? Like, seriously, like, I think, like, I'm really, really, really getting disappointed with YouTube, YouTube's views. And I've said this before, and, like, one minute it'll be really good, then the next minute it'll be really, really down. And I'm not sure if it's because of the season, but, you know, the one video that I put up on Monday, I worked really hard on that with big, big wig video in, in its own. Actual, the actual wig, the actual tutorial editing. Um, the actual tutorial and the editing so you know what i'm saying i was really really disappointed just to see the little teeny tiny bit of views that i accumulated from it like you know and i know it's not the tags and things like that but it was very disappointing and it just becomes very disappointing when you see that there are others who maybe did like the exact same type of video and maybe have like the exact same amount of numbers as you, meaning viewers as followers. Um, and they get like crazy views and you don't. It's like, what the fuck am I doing wrong? So I don't know. I feel like I'm starting to lose my momentum for this whole like YouTube thing. And I really don't want to feel that way. And I think maybe it is. It has to do with the wigs. And I love doing wigs because I like to look different all the time. But... I don't know. I feel like I'm just putting in too much work and not getting enough recognition or enough views for it. And that part, like, just is, like, very disappointing to me. So I'm not really sure. But um, so that was my day plan. And that's what makes me feel like I don't want to do a video. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, that's how my day is. Um, there was something I wanted to tell you guys, and I don't even remember. 
I don't even remember. I do know that I'm kind of like pissed off because this is not my regular scarf that I wear. The other one is like this blue and orange and this colorful one. You know when you have a good scarf and you don't wash it, like, you know, it got gel and hairspray and whatever else kind of hair products you got in that scarf and the scarf get real stiff. Well, that's what happened to my scarf. Okay? It is a silk scarf and I like it because it wraps all the way around and ties right here. Well, I guess there was too much shit in the scarf. I've never washed it before, but I just started using it. I pull the scarf off. There's like an orangish red hair dye on it, like dye on my skin. And it's silk. Now I got holes in it and shit. Like, oh, God. Oh. I love the death scarf. I just put it in a wash, and I'm hoping that it come through for me. I had to take this one. Like, this is like a silky kind of. Kind of like, it's not like that one. It's wider, so I had to like fold it triple the time. And I'm just using it to lay my edges on. I mean, I like this to wrap my head with. Not to wear as a scarf to press my hair down. <sighs> I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who has one of those scarves that they just cannot bring themselves to wash. And like, I'm pretty sure if I use the cotton one, like, you know, regular material one, I wouldn't have these issues with it dying off of me or ripping because it got hard. Because of all the product built up in it, because of silk. But I like the silkish ones, okay, because it seems like it just holds the hair better to me. I could be wrong, but that's the one that I fucking like. So, in case y'all like, what is you eating? I like candy, but not every kind of candy, okay? Um, I love these trolls. Um, the trolley, I call them trolls, the trolley worms. The um, Sour Bright, the Sour Bright Crawlers, I love them. So this is in recognition for um, the 4th of July, Independence Day. And I love these. I love them. Okay, so they're like my downfall. I really do like these a lot. And I know I shouldn't be eating them. Because for one, I got my teeth fixed. So on the 29th of May, I go back to get my permanent. So you guys probably don't even notice it, but... These two teeth right here and this one, they're not my teeth. I have had my teeth shaved down. So they're actually um, temporaries that I've had in for probably like, um, I want to say like a week and a half now. On the 29th of May, I go back because my crowns are being made. And I have to get nine crowns all together. So, like my teeth look better now. like, But my crowns will look even better than these. And I'm so tight about this one. Because, damn, she could have made it a little bit brighter. Like, that shit looks like it's like a yellowish color. Like, I know it's not the real teeth. And I know it's not the teeth on the material that you make with the actual tooth. But, god damn, you could have, like, made it look, like, shine it up something. I don't know. Either way. So, we're going to get into this real talk because I have some things to do today. I do have to post the video up. Um, Well, it's already done, but I need to post it up. And I also have to go to the uh, post office to mail these wigs off, which I should have done yesterday, but my ass was too busy. And, you know, I've just been really, really busy lately. Like, you know, doing things, life situations, life things, and shit like that. So, you know. It is what it is. I'm still on my weight loss journey, and I'm doing pretty decent, I guess. Um, I was at, listen, bitch, I was at 188. A bitch was. Please tell me how I got to back to 192. I don't even know. It seems like the 90s are my thing. Then, is it because I had most of my kids in the 90s? I don't know. Then, I went from 192. I was like, okay, I went back to 192. I was like, all right, I'm going to just suck it up because that's what I've been for like a month and a half, two months. Did a bitch go to 197 last week? Within two days, I went from one, I gained five pounds. I was like, I didn't even eat shit, barely. So, you know, it was that time of the month, and it, it went back to what it was supposed to go back to. Whew, thank Jesus. But then why did I gain, like, a pound and a half yesterday? Like, I don't even know what's going on, but I'm going to tell you what. I know my booty's looking nice, okay? Been doing them squats and shit. And I don't know if I am gaining the weight because my butt is getting firm and, and stuff. It's muscle because my thighs have gotten wider and my butt has gotten bigger. So I don't know if it's because of that 
But um, I'm gonna just take it as it is, okay? I'm just take it as it is. So let's get into this real talk. If you guys want a real talk about your life situation, you can definitely go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure that you put in the subject line, real talk. Um, if you want to change the names of the people that you're talking about, because y'all be talking about some motherfuckers in these emails. You could definitely go ahead and say, April, I've already changed your names. If you don't say that, I'm going to either assume you did or you didn't. I may or may not change it myself. But either way, let's get into this real talk, ladies, because we got some shit to do today. Okay? Huh? 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 What? Okay, so this one, this first one that I want to read to you guys is basically this young lady, she emailed me um like a let me see when she originally she it, she originally emailed me April 4th, okay? So I'm not really sure if you guys remember, but I'm just going to recap it real quick for you guys. And hopefully if I remember, I'll post the video link down below. But she emailed this to me April 4th, and she just emailed me again as an update. So I really want to make sure that you guys understand. So I'm going to read the original one first so that you guys understand the new email, okay? The update. Hey, April. So I changed the names in this real talk, and this is the first one. I'm in desperate need of your advice. I watch a real I watch real talks every day. I watch a real talk video of yours every day, so I figured you would be the best one to ask about this. So about six months ago, I met Bob. He was everything that a man should be. He was kind, sweet, caring. He had two jobs, worked extremely hard, and made me feel like an absolute queen. There is an age gap between us. I'm 22 and he's 30. So I explained to Bob in the beginning of our relationship, I'm a very strong-willed woman. I work a full-time job. I go to school part-time. I have my own apartment, my own car. I do everything very independently just because that's how I was raised. So four months into our relationship, Bob's lease was up on his apartment, and he asked if he could move in with me until he found another place of his own. I wasn't sure at first because it was really still new. He assured me he just needed time to find a place. I said, okay, that's, that was a month ago. That, she said, I said, okay, that was months ago. After moving in, his entire personality changed. He became a lot more controlling, <coughs> Excuse me, questioning me, calling me 15 to 30 times a day, even when I explained to him that I was in school or working. He has an overnight job. He expects me to stay up on the phone with him until 4 o'clock in the morning every night because he wants to make sure that I'm not doing anything. I and I am at that I haven't been and I am at that I haven't been perfect before meeting him I had a lot of male friends I was single for a really long time and I was dating multiple people and he knew this before we started our relationship now that I've cut all those people off he doesn't believe me checks my phone while I'm sleeping asks ask me constantly about my gas usage in my car and where I spend my money I never ask him for anything besides to pay his bills and half of the rent which is his which this past month I have paid everything because his account was messed up. April, I'm suffocating. I told him recently he needs to find a place that turned into a huge blow up, resulting in me driving three hours to my mom's so I can get away from him and breathe. April, he needs to go. But am I wrong for still wanting the man I met six months ago? That was it. So basically, Mio, I think that's how you say it, Mio, Mio, she, um, she met the dude, they was, they just started dating, she met him, like, God, how, they was dating for like, I think, four months prior to him moving into her apartment. He needed to move into her apartment, he said, because his lease was up, okay, and he didn't find an apartment in time, so he just wanted to stay with her until he was able to find his own, a new place. But once he moved in it, I don't think the nigga was trying to move out like I stated. So then he starts checking her phone, calling her 15 to 30 times a day while she's at school and work. Expects her to stay up to 4 o'clock in the morning on the phone with him while he's working his overnight job because he thinks she's up to something. And then even checks the gas mileage on her motherfucking car. Like I said in the video, when a nigga checks your gas mileage on your car, he got some issues. And who the fuck 
not, doesn't know when their lease is up. Like he didn't know when his lease was up. You get notification from the rental agency that your lease is about to be up. They remind you more than once. They remind you more than motherfucking once. They send you a reminder months in advance with just a letter. Then they send you a packet asking you, do you want to renew your lease? And if so, here are the documents to do so. So it's not like he didn't know. And there's no way he couldn't have known. But now that he's in her home, he's, his whole attitude has changed. His personality has went from zero to 60 real quick. And like she said, his personality has changed. That's because you met his representative in the beginning. Like I said in the video, you need to get rid of him. You need to get rid of him. He needs to move out and you don't need to be with him in general because the nigga has issues. When you looking at people's gas mileage in their car, you got motherfucking issues. Like, could you imagine your, your husband or your man coming to you and you know that the shit was on a half of a tank? You yourself, and then it might have been on something else. You might not even, you knew it was on half a tank, but the nigga knew it was on half, a, a little bit over half. Like, um, let's see. Um, two point, um, let's see, let's see, half, let's see. Hmm. He just knew it was like a tiny bit over a half. That shit was like on three quarters or a little bit like three eighths or some shit like that. Whatever. And he comes to you and he's just like, so where you went today? what yeah you used four drops of gas you used like a a, 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 um, a quarter extra mile of gas today when it only takes you uh, a mile of, of gas to get to work like uh what the fuck did you just say could you imagine some dude coming and say you used a quarter of a mile of gas today you use a quarter extra gas today but you usually use like a mile of gas each day to go to work, but you went somewhere else because you used a little tiny bit, a few drops of extra gas, so you went somewhere else. Could you imagine if some dude came to you or a bitch and was like, ask you about your gas mileage? I would be like, I think I would just start flipping the fuck out. Like, who the fuck are you to be asking me about my motherfucking gas mileage and how much gas I done fucking use? Are you out your fucking rabbit ass mind? Like, what? Where are we doing this at? My I just was like, get rid of the nigga because he's crazy. Because when they do this shit, he's not going to change. He's getting worse. It's gotten worse. He shouldn't even been in your apartment in the first place. I would have told him no. Like, nah, you can't come stay here. You definitely about to move your shit up in here. But you're not about to come stay here. My house not just met you. Man, please, you better go stay at the shelter. They always accept them people at the shelter. The YMCA, you can rent a room until you find a motherfucking new apartment to lease. That lease and shit, I don't I don't I don't believe none of that shit. And on top of that, when people do shit like like keep like just speculating and accusing you of shit, that's when they up to shit. So now that I done read y'all the first video, let's go to the update. Okay. She wrote this to me on the 16th of May. Hey, April, it's Mayel. So about a month ago, I wrote you about my psychotic ex-boyfriend who was literally driving me insane. So now he's an ex-boyfriend. You know, checking my gas usage and you were 1,000% correct. It was time for him to go, but it gets good. So about a week after the real talk aired and I came to my senses, I got a DM from this female saying he was Bob's wife slash baby mother. I never knew about kids or a wife. All in caps. April, I was the side chick turned girlfriend and never knew. Now, while we were dating, he would always answer my calls text throughout the day i have been to his apartment we went on dates on the weekends there were no signs of a female or child anywhere granted i always stayed near the entrance so she went on to say bob cheated on her constantly was abusive controlling and did nothing for their two children or the three he had from another woman she left him and closed the lease for the apartment which he got evicted from once she left. She sent pictures of him with the kids, wedding stuff and everything. April, I hit the floor. I'm a communication major and couldn't even tell I was being played. 
That night when he went to work, I called my cousin. We packed all his shit in trash bags and changed my locks. So when he called me as he usually would, I let him have it. From all the frustration and disgust I had for this nigga at this point, I told him while recording the combo, he is not to come to my apartment. His shit is sitting at the gate and I will put a restraining order on him if he tried anything. Not to mention I'm licensed to carry. You know what she's talking about. I changed my number and I switched cars with my cousin for a couple days just in case. It was like I lost 30 pounds. A week later, I cut my hair. LOL. Now I'm happily single. Thank you for your real talk and everyone who left comments. Love you and thank you. Just reading that gave me goosebumps, okay? Because listen, first of all, and she do look really cute with her short hair. You look really cute, Mayel, with your short hair. I want to have the courage to cut my hair, for real, because I have been really wanting to cut it, and I love your new hairstyle. This looks really, really pretty on you, girl. So, this is what I'm talking about. This like sleeping with the motherfucking enemy. Y'all don't know who y'all be getting with. It's, it's so fucked up that you will put your whole, like, not even life, but your whole time and effort into somebody. Meanwhile, this nigga is like really, really shady. I told you how the fuck you gonna not know the lease is about to be up. I told y'all. I told y'all. There's no way on God's green earth that you don't know that your lease is about to fucking expire. Come on. We've all rented apartments at one point in time in our life. And we know about motherfucking leases. Okay. I'm not about to be homeless. And here's my thing. Me, personally, I don't really like to move because I hate to pack my shit the fuck up and have to look for another place to live. So when that motherfucking lease is sent out, you best believe a bitch is signing and reading all the fine print. If you try to hike the rent up too much, bitch, we gonna talk and negotiate shit. I'm not trying to be fucking looking for nowhere else to live. Also, I'm not about to be at the last minute shit. Like, And on top of that, why would you let your lease expire and not know what you don't check the motherfucking mail? I'm pretty sure if you don't check the mail, they might call, they might text, they might email you. There's all different types of ways that these rental agencies can get in touch with you to where you know that your rental lease is about to be up. And on top of that, it's common sense that you moved in this a year ago. I wonder when my lease is about to be up. But I, I kind of figured that the nigga was lying. And look, she was dead ass. Not not she, but he was dead ass wrong. The nigga had a wife and two kids and a kid with somebody the fuck else. So this is what I'm trying to figure out. When Mayel was going to his apartment, but she stayed near the entrance, she didn't go in. Um, I don't know if she went in the actual apartment. She said she stayed near the entrance, so she might not have been actually inside. How did he like hide this shit like all this time? But you know what? What might have been is he might not even have to hide it and be sneaky. His real actual wife was probably so fed up and tired of it that she didn't even give a fuck if he was doing it blatantly because she was already ready to go. She she fucking closed the lease and moved and let the nigga get evicted. Like, you know what? To each his own, he got exactly what he deserved. And look, I said the shelter is accepting, motherfuckers. This girl done put him out. His ex-wife, his soon-to-be ex-wife done put him out. Where else is he going to go stay? Bob the Builder, okay? You better build your motherfucking self a house, okay? For real, build your motherfucking self a place to stay. This is what I'm talking about. This is why I say no, okay? If you don't know the nigga and you just met him and you've been met with him for six months or whatever, they've been together for six months, but they was together for four or three before he moved in. If you don't need the nigga, you just met the nigga, and he's, uh, like, you in the relationship with six months with him, don't let that nigga move in your house. Don't let him move in your house. If you've been with him for a year, don't let that motherfucker move in your house. Female, male, don't let them move in your house. Like, seriously, because all types of crazy shit happen. They do real fuckery dirt, real fuckery to you, like some real shit. They do some real foul shit to you. And then when you when you put them out or you, you break up with them, they do some real foul shit. Y'all already know what I'm talking about because I've already had a past relationship and I'm talking about, what, not talking about with my husband, but I'm talking about with that asshole. You know what I'm saying? He did some real grimy shit. Y'all remember the video? He did some real grimy shit. Then I look on your tablet. You talking shit about my kids. You talking shit about me. You got some girlfriend somewhere else. And I was happy about that because I was been trying to get him the fuck up out of here. Like, he was only supposed to be here to find an apartment and he was going to get his own shit. 
Let me tell you something. When a nigga tell you, well, I just want to stay with you until I get my own place. Don't believe that shit. Don't believe the hype. Don't, don't, don't believe the hype. I'm saying for real. Don't believe that shit. Do not believe that shit. Take it from me. Do not believe that shit. Because first of all, nigga, if you was a real man, you would have been had your own shit. You wouldn't have to come to me, a woman, and ask me for a place to stay until you find somewhere to fucking stay. Like, listen, the shelter is always open. They might close at a certain time at night, but um, the next day, they're going to be open. So you can definitely take your fucking application ass over to the shelter and uh, fucking stay there. When a man tell you that can he stay with you until he gets his own apartment bitch let me tell you something that nigga's not trying to go no fucking where they get real comfortable and um, first of all it's not even that they get real comfortable they never had no intentions on finding their own place okay i done said to that motherfucker that was staying here multiple times when you gonna go find your place he come back with pictures on the phone look i went and looked at this place and he actually did like but you was just playing me you really was looking at them so that you could just um just basically like appease me and make me shut the fuck up but no so when you moving in you need uh, you need some help moving in you need some furniture what what you need never fucking moved in okay so gotta get your ass out of here the way you gotta get the fuck up out of here let me tell you something. People could be so grimy in this day and age. And like for me, I know some people might feel like, oh, why did you go backwards? Because you went back to your ex-husband. Let me tell you something. It ain't even that I went backwards. I went back to where I knew it was supposed to be for me. This is where I'm supposed to be. This is who I love. This is who I want to be with. This is who I know truly loves me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like I know for 1000% fact. That this man loves me, regardless of how I may look, if I ain't got no edges, if I ain't got no eyelashes on, if I ain't got no makeup on, if I'm fat, skinny, whatever. He loves me for me, and he has never done no harm to me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Well, maybe like a couple of things, but that was in, in, wasn't in his right state of mind. Not saying that I am making excuses for him, but he has never done anything on purpose to be grimy to me or to hurt our family. So... This is the person that I truly want to be with and love. And I've always felt that way about him. So it's not that I'm going backwards. But I feel like when you meet somebody at this day and age, you have to be like really, really careful because it doesn't have to, it doesn't matter if they're a man or female or another female and another man. It doesn't matter. People have an agenda. Everybody has an agenda. And sometimes it sucks that you, the agenda is you, meaning they out to get you or whatever the fuck you got. They may see you doing good. You may not even be doing that good, but a nigga could get with you because he need a place to stay. You know what I'm saying? And that's a fucked up way to treat a person. Like, I don't know. Like, I, me personally, I couldn't live with somebody and just be lying to them every day. Like, living another fucking life and lying. Like, don't that shit get, like, tiring and hard? Like, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm glad for Mayel that she got out of the situation. And I wonder what Bob's ass is up to now. That's like some single white female shit. He got, he moved up into her place, started changing his whole attitude, started asking acting controlling wasn't even paying his fair share to live there and was calling her and bugging out and checking her gas mileage like nigga bye i would have been put his ass out you know what i wouldn't have had to put him out because he would have never came up in my motherfucking space this is what i tell y'all females a lot of times be mindful but most of all make sure that you love yourself first and really really figure a nigga out because I know it sounds good when they be like, you know, you real pretty, ma. You looking good. Oh, man. You know, I wish you, you know, you remind me of my mom and all this goody good shit that they say to you guys. Like, you know, that shit go in one ear and out the other. I know that shit go in one ear and out the other for me because I ain't even trying to hear that shit. None of that shit. I like, you know, sometimes my husband may say some things to me, too. And I I let it go one ear out the other because it be sounding too good. But I got to realize and I say something. He say something to me like, what you don't believe me? You know what? It's because I'm so guarded. Like, I, I got to... It's not even that I got to learn to pick and choose because I don't have to pick and choose because I'm with him. But you know what? I have to learn to let it down just some. Let the guard down, girl. I didn't mean it ain't all the way up here, but just let it down. Let it down a little bit more because you got to like, you got to like three quarters down, girl. Go down like one more eighth. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to, you, you, you got you 75% down, get, get down like, you know, maybe go like to 10% to a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like at all times be guarded. That could be your husband and your best friend and you've been with him forever. 
this for me is 20 years, okay? I've been with this man almost 20 fucking years. And he'd be like, well, we weren't together for 40 years. Nigga, we was together, okay? Because you was calling and writing me, and I was calling and writing you. And you was telling me you was loving me, and I was loving you, and I was loving you still regardless. So we was together. We always going to be together, okay? Regardless of what, all right? So I've been with this man damn near 20 years. My son, Wuzzle, would be 20 in June next month. And we was together since Wuzzle was a few months old. We've been together almost 20 fucking years. So, you know what I'm saying? That's my that's my world right there. But even though you you know what I'm saying sometimes when you put your all trust and all everything into somebody, sometimes that shit go backwards too. And then they know that you put their all your all and everything. You gotta watch out for that too. But I'm what I'm trying to get y'all to understand is this. Listen. Listen, Linda, listen. Don't be moving in no motherfucking strange mofos in your house after you just met them. Let me tell you something. I wouldn't give a fuck if that was your best friend. Not even your best friend, excuse me. I'm not going to say best friend. But even when you're your best friend, you got to be leery because you don't know. That bitch could, you could think she your best friend and the bitch really ain't your best friend, okay? That bitch could be up to some screaming, screaming. Y'all was best friends at the time, but then you started getting on and getting better and got a job and got a car, whatever. Whatever, you just improved. And that best friend is like scheming and scamming because she ain't up there with you at no more. Y'all ain't at the same level and she's really hating. She not your best friend like you think she is. So you got to be very mindful of moving them in too. But what I was getting ready to say, and I totally forgot just like that. Basically, like this. Don't be moving in everybody. I don't give a fuck if they say, yo, I'm homeless. That's what a shelter is for, nigga. That's what a motherfucking shelter is for, bitch. Take your ass to the motherfucking shelter down the street. They got some beds, and if they don't, there's another one, and there's another one. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next. All right. Okay, so I had wanted to read this one for a minute, okay? And I kept running out of time. So this one was actually um, written to me like a month ago. Hey, Miss April, I've changed my name. You can call me Giselle. And first of all, Giselle, I do apologize. First of all, let me say how much I love your channel. I have been watching you for years since your first channel. It was you, Atia, Thomas Adriana, and Miss Shonda who got me into wigs and ultimately influenced me to create my own YouTube channel. I'm a teacher full-time, but I started my channel three years ago. And although I'm so grateful for the following that I've gotten so far, which is 37,000 plus. I feel so defeated sometimes and want to say screw the whole thing. I feel like sometimes I'm gaining subscribers and losing views, which feels so weird to me. When I first started my channel, I was using my cheap cell phone and the built-in camera on my computer to record, and I got thousands of views. Now I call myself putting my money into my channel by upgrading to a Canon camera and studio life, the whole shebang, and my views are barely hitting 1K. It's so frustrating and at times because I put so much time and energy into creating a place where women can feel empowered and supported through hair and beauty. I've spent money on expensive editing software and sometimes I feel like I'm doing it for nothing. Believe me, I'm not throwing shade because I feel like YouTube is a big enough platform for everyone, but it seems to be filled with nothing but drama pages about celebrities and celebrity YouTubers, pranks, and people making up fake story times. I don't do it for the money because if that were the case, I would have been gone a long time ago. My question to you is, do you think I should let this YouTube life go or just keep grinding? Thanks so much for the advice in advance. I've attached a photo of myself. Maybe you've seen one of my videos. XO Giselle. Well, girl, why you didn't... Um, oh, she's so ooh, she's so pretty, too. She got, like, nice little thick hips, too. Thick thighs and shit. And I like this blonde wig. So you a teacher? Girl, what grade are you teaching? Because if you're teaching them high school boys... Girl. So she's really pretty, and I really wish she would have shared her YouTube channel with me. So hopefully, Giselle, you see this. I will definitely respond to you via email, so that way you can send me the link to your YouTube and ask you if it's all right to post it in this video. But she's really pretty, and I can totally understand where she's coming from with this entire YouTube thing. Like, seriously, like, I I totally get it. Like, 
YouTube is saturated with pranks. And these are not even fucking pranks. You're going to tell me that you're going to prank me every motherfucking day and I'm not going to know about it. So you're going to be laid up in the bed with another bitch and I'm supposed to, and I'm supposed to come in and not really get mad because that's a prank? That shit ain't funny. If that was the real world, nigga, you might be dead and we might not be able to air this on YouTube. All of these prank channels is a bunch of bullshit. And I'm not hating it. I'm definitely not throwing no shade on anybody. But there's no way that you can prank me every motherfucking day. We're going to prank each other every day. Like, that shit gets tiresome, okay? Like, really? It gets tiresome. And then I thought that, you know something? I, in the beginning, I would watch these story time videos. And I was, and I did not think they were fake until after a while. I started saying to myself, damn, they got a lot going on. And they like, I'm glad that's not me. Dang, that happened to her. This is how I started feeling about them. Like, dang, she got a lot going on. She needs to stay in the house. And this is how I started feeling. Then I started seeing like a whole bunch of these story times pop up. And then everybody having all these, these problems and issues in their life. And I was just like, there's no motherfucking way that this shit happened to your punk ass. All right? You look like a fucking punk. You look like you can't even fight. Shut the fuck up with these fake-ass story times. And they be fake-ass story times. And it was like a trend. And, you know, it's so crazy because I have gotten plenty of comments and emails. You should do a story time. Bitch, on what? I do story time. Real talk. And it's not no fake shit. In the beginning, in each story, real talk, I give my own scenario if I have one to relate to the shit. My story times is not really no fucking story times that you want to hear. Like, okay, I used to be, um, I used to be on welfare. I got food stamps. Um, let's see, I used to get food stamps. I was on welfare. Um, let's see, um. I got arrested. I went to jail and shit. I bashed my husband upside the head. I went to jail. I've been arrested several times. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else? Um, yeah, several times. Okay. Um, I got no friends. Uh, what the fuck else can I possibly say? Like, my teeth are falling off. Like, these are not story times. This is fucking reality to me. Okay? So, I don't think, like, I have to fucking make a video about the bullshit and the horror and the fucking shit, the fuckery of my life. Like, I will share it with you guys when the time is right. So, I get it. This is That was a trending thing. But let me tell you something. It was really fucking annoying. And some people still fucking do it. And I can... I try to figure out for the life of me, are there, are there that many fucking stupid people in the world who really believe all of this foolishness with the story time bullshit? Like, do we believe this? Do you guys really believe the bullshit of these story times? Like, every week this bitch got a story time or every day she got a story time? Like, damn, you should be dead by now. All the shit that you've been going through, all this story time shit, you ain't dead yet? Like, hmm? I don't get it. So I get that. And then also the drama channels. Like, okay, so there are some drama channels that I will admit that I really, really do like to watch. Like, I love to watch Rich Lux, okay? I like watching him. He's funny, and I feel like he is, like, I just like to watch him. Um, but also, uh, um... Martin Lewis. I like to watch Martin Lewis. And believe it or not, I don't know if you guys know who she is. Maybe you guys do, but I started watching her like forever ago. And this was because of a haul that she did. And I really, really did like the haul that she did, which is Trisha Paytas. I think that's how you say it. She did a haul and she's just like this goofy blonde white girl. And she's goofy to me. But now she does like, you know, she sits and she eats in front of the camera all the time. And I just find that to be so fucking distasteful because what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? She's got any surgeries and now you're just going to sit there and eat your life away? Like, don't do that to yourself, girl. There's so much more that you could do. Um, But I, I do like some of the drama channels, some of them. But then again, I and or the celebrity drama channels. I don't watch those and I, I don't really even really watch the drama channels. Like I will watch Trisha P I mean I will watch um Martin Lewis. I will watch um Tra what is his name? Trey TV. Um 
the black kid, um, little chubby black kid. I watch him. I think that's Choice, Choice TV. I watch him because he's funny. And I used to love his opening intro with the goosebump sound, but he doesn't use that anymore. And then um, the other guy, I can't remember his name, but I like, I love him when his, his intro is fuck it up, um, best friend, best friend. I love him. Okay. I love him. And I think I like them because of their personality. I don't even care about what they have to say, basically, about these other YouTubers because they're talking about YouTubers and I could care less. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, I, I don't, well, don't get it twisted. I'm not hating and I don't throw no shade, but I don't give a fuck about Chris and Queen and their relationship. Like, people put too much shit into other people's relationships. Stop worrying about what the fuck other people is doing and do you. Like, you know what I'm saying? If the girl want to fuck Clarence or Clarence, whatever his name is, then let him. If she want to fuck with Chris, then let him. Chris fucking with the girl from, um... Uh, my wife and kids, I don't know her name, but he fucks with her. I don't think Chris is cute. I don't, there's all these girls. Oh, Chris is cute. Chris looks like a fucking broccoli stalk to me. He's got all this hair here and all this hair here. Like, just, just do. Go get a haircut or something. Fix yourself up and get it together. And, you know, I think Queen is a beautiful young lady. She has a very pretty voice. And I wish her, like, I don't wish her well, because, and I don't wish her bad because I don't know her, but I would love for her to, to, to step out of the whole bullshit with that whole clan that she's with. Um, what are they? Um, you know, that clan that she used to always be with. I don't know, but it seems like to me these these drama channels or these, these couples channels, they always moving to big houses and live, giving house tours. But these motherfuckers don't have no goddamn furniture. Okay? Y'all are all showing these big ass houses and y'all don't have no goddamn furniture. Like, let's be realistic. Like, you know who I do like to watch? <clears throat> and, I, and I don't really watch everybody's vlogs, but I do like to watch Glamazante. Okay? And I've watched her from the very beginning of her videos. And I love her. Like, you know what? She's very humble and she's a regular person down to earth. She lives in her apartment. She got her little dog. She don't be flexing. You know what I mean by flexing? Like, showing off all this fake shit these big fake ass houses and shit and you know what I'm saying I like people like that she just her she just act like her which is cool wild and crazy and I love her I love her wild and crazy side okay so I don't know there's certain people that I really do like to watch um but all these drama channels like yeah I don't really give a fuck about certain people people have asked me you know who DK 4L is like, I don't know who you're talking about. But then I had to look it up. Okay, I've watched like one or two of their videos. They're a cute couple, but okay, now they got beef. Or um, Chrissy and Damo. Um, have you met them because they live near you? No, I haven't. And I've watched their video like once a, a couple times. And okay, certain things are not for me. Like, I just don't watch certain things, okay? But I understand what she's getting at. Like, and then there's the celebrity, celebrity gossip channels. Like, I don't give a fuck about what Wendy Williams is doing or Jay-Z and Beyonce or Kanye and Kim or George the Giraffe and Peter Griffin and Family Matters and Steve Urkel. And I don't give a fuck about none of that bullshit, okay? You know why? I don't, I don't, I don't know about what these celebrities are doing in their life. And uh, some people may say, well, girl, you got to, I don't need to stay up on that shit because you know why? These motherfuckers ain't doing shit for me. Meaning... They're not paying my bills. They're not putting toilet paper on my my fucking toilet paper roll to wipe my ass with. They're not doing none of that shit for me. So why should I fucking worry about what the fuck they doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, I like to watch my videos and I like to watch people on YouTube and see what they got to offer and watch their tutorials, maybe even some of their vlogs. But to know about their whole inside life and the drama that's going on in their channels or in their life, that's not my concern because everybody got some bullshit going on. And I just think that some of these things, this is what's interesting to the world though today. And that's unfortunate. Like with all these reality TV shows, everybody loves these reality TV shows. And me personally, I can't get into them like that because for one, they're fake. You mean to tell me that y'all don't sat there and y'all watch Love and Hip Hop? I've watched it quite a few times with my kids and they in the restaurant talking. Let's just say it's... um. Jocelyn Hernandez and what's his name? Um, Stevie J. And they in the restaurant are, you know what? We're going to say, yeah, we're going to say them because that's really, you know, everybody knows they are. So they in the restaurant talking and you can see all these people in the background sitting and having dinner or lunch and they just drinking and conversing with one another. Hey, yes, Bob. Mm. And here goes Jocelyn Hernandez and Stevie J. Where's Stevie J? I want a new record. I want a new record, Stevie J. I want a new record. 
Because Cardi B have one or all of this shit. And then they get real loud and she jumps up and throws the table and just punches him and douses him with liquor and food. And then you got these people that's at the restaurant. Yeah, so how was your day? Y'all don't see none of this shit that's going on. Y'all just going to sit there and not turn around and act like y'all don't see this shit. You got to be kidding me. Okay, I see this on every motherfucking reality TV show. There'll be some beef popping off and the people that's in the background that's minding their own business... The standbyers, they just standing by and not even paying no attention. Listen, let's make it reality. Oh, shit. Did you see that? Take your phones out. Oh, shit. Because that's what people do in reality. They start recording shit. You know what I'm saying? They start fucking taking pictures of shit. They get real close up on the shit. They don't just be sitting there sipping their tea like, oh, yeah, that's just Jocelyn Hernandez and Stevie J again. No, bitches is nosy and niggas is nosy. So that's why I don't watch these reality TV shows because it's all pump fake. It's all fake pumping, whatever you want to call it. It's all fake bullshit. Like, you're not about to feed that shit. Or even like the Bad Girls Club. I don't know if that even comes on anymore, but I've watched quite a few seasons of those with my daughters too. And it's like, okay, bitch, you're going to keep running your motherfucking mouth to me and I'm going to smack the shit. I'm not about to let you stand here and keep fucking running off at the pussy to me over and over and over again. But this is what people like to watch they love the drama and you know what i'm saying it's unfortunate that the world has come to this and they don't like really any real creativity but they like this type of shit so with that being said my dear i just think like for me and i feel the same way that you do because i you know what i'm saying i I have put a lot of time and effort into doing YouTube. And you know what, though? I enjoy it because I don't, I'm not able to get out. You know what I'm saying? And I am able to get out, but I don't have any friends. I don't have any friends. And I like to talk with you guys. And so you guys are my friends. Even if we've never met in person, I like to be able to talk to you guys and voice my opinion and say what the fuck I have to say and then listen to what y'all have to say. So this is my outlet. So I do it for fun and it's a hobby to me. And it's how it all started out as a hobby to me. Yeah, true indeed. I do get my coins from doing it, but I enjoy it. And then there are some times that I enjoy it so much that it like I work and I go hard at it because I want you guys to enjoy it too. And then I don't see the benefits like I don't see anybody watching it so that's the part that gets me down but you know what we have to take new avenues to doing shit even though when you first started watching me Giselle it was me Shonda Miss Shonda um and Atia, and that's who it was back then. It wasn't a lot of us women of color on YouTube and definitely not doing wig videos. It was probably like about four of us. So everybody was to watch us because it was only four of us. Now when you look at it, there's probably like a million of them. So it saturates everybody. And that being said, you have to kind of like stand out and do different things. But once you do something different, honey, everybody else is going to do it. And even if you feel like it's different, trust and believe it's probably somebody else out there. My thing is this to you. Don't worry about what this person has and don't worry about how many views this other person has because that was my issue too. Do it because it's something that you want to do and you have fun doing it. Don't feel like you obligated to do it if you because you have a full-time job. So if you get up tomorrow and you be like, you know what, I don't feel like doing no video, then that's fine. You don't have to. Do it when you feel like you're in good spirits because when you're in like a bad mood, trust and believe that shit shows all over your motherfucking face. But I will tell you this, there are certain tools that you can can use that can help you with your tags which is called tube buddy um, you can get the free version of that. It's called Tube Buddy, T U B E Buddy, B U D D Y. And it'll help you with tags and things like that. But you can either upgrade to $9 a month or like to $40 or $20 a month, whatever. It does help you a lot because I use that and it does generate new tags for you. But there's other ways to go about doing that also. But also, you know, you can collab with other people. Sometimes that helps. I don't really think that that helps like that. You know what I'm saying? I just sometimes think like it is who you are or who you know. You know what I'm saying? And like I said in the beginning of this video, I have like the same amount of subscribers as someone else or other people and we do the same exact videos but they're getting way more views than I am and I don't understand. And maybe if I don't put out so many videos a day, then that will work. But you know what I'm saying? I have so many things to catch up on that people do rely on me to put out a video every day so I just like to be consistent with it. But I do get very tired also. But I would just say hang in there and just continue to do it because you enjoy doing it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe vlog some. Vlog on your way to work. Voice your opinion. Say how you feel. Maybe do things like that. 
change is good because some people do get tired of watching the same thing and that's what I start feeling about the wigs. Maybe I should start doing back to my makeup videos. Even though I don't do makeup videos that great, like I don't think I'm like the best at doing makeup because I like my neutral looks. I just think that something different will always be beneficial to everybody. So with that being said, I would definitely hope that she gives me her link so that way we can share and watch her videos as well. But post your videos on social media and share them also. So let's move on to the next real talk. Okay. I recently moved into a two-bedroom apartment with my eldest son. He is a truck driver, so he is gone most of the time. I have a friend who can't keep a roof over her head. Settle in because this is going to be a long-ass story. She and I, we met about a, we met at a job where we were making a pretty good salary. She was living in a rent by the hour hotel. I was living with my daughter. My friend, let's call her Betty, is married to her childhood sweetheart and has two children with him. The oldest child is in Florida with the youngest, and the youngest is in Texas with her homeless parents. The youngest has a baby and is 20 years old. The only one of them who has worked since I have met them is Betty my friend and she is lazy as hell when she when we were working together she told me how she worked at a major hospital and they fired her she of course said it was a setup and was undeserved betty's supervisor called her lazy and said she was going to get rid of her well betty is lazy when i worked with her we all noticed that but i thought maybe it was just because of the homeless situation and stress and all well they found a nice two-bedroom apartment she paid $500 to move in, which was pretty amazing to me. I was there, so I heard all the rules and the regulations of the apartment. She used fake paychecks to move in and didn't include her husband or her daughter or her grandchild. Betty also used a fake social security card since she has an eviction on hers. Well, I thought it's a good thing they moved in and aren't homeless anymore. We were laid off and unemployed and on unemployment. Betty's plan was to wait until her income tax money before she paid her rent. I thought that was crazy since God knows how long it takes for the tax returns to get here. Then she says she is looking for another apartment because this one is trying to charge her $1,100 for a water bill in addition to her rent. I asked how that was even possible and said there was a leak and she said there was a leak and they were charging her for the water loss. Then she called saying the apartment caught fire. Now you have to know this would have been her second apartment fire since that was why she was living in the rent by our hotel. Her apartment caught fire, so that's the reason why she had to move to that hotel. Red Cross, Red Cross put them in the hotel. Then the apartment contacted her and said they would be releasing her from releasing her from her lease. Less than two months in the apartment, I moved into the apartment with my eldest child, who is a truck driver. The insurance company gave her a check for $3,000 for the fire. She runs out and buys a bunch of clothes, bus tickets, and rents a couple of rooms so she can go to New Orleans for a wedding. Knowing they are homeless, she works part-time, but now, by now, she works part-time by now, but still, the daughter and the husband are unemployed that live with her. Before she goes on her trip to New Orleans, she calls me talking about she is hungry and don't have no food and I can and and will I please cook something for them to eat? Hold up. She calls me talking about before she goes on her trip to New Orleans, she calls me talking about she's hungry and she doesn't have food and could I please cook something for them to eat? I said, "Okay. After I get the food all ready for them, I call to tell her, "Hey, dinner is ready." She fixes her mouth to say, well, will you bring us a plate, please? I was like, no, I'm not bringing you a plate only to have you come get the dirty dishes and clean them. You can come here and eat. We don't want to come there, she says. Betty says, we don't want to come there. Can you please just bring us something to eat? We are hungry. I told her they must not be too hungry since they aren't coming to where the food is. She said I was not a good friend and she would never contact me again. Would it be so? She calls and apologizes a few weeks later, said she was truly sorry and it wasn't her being it was and it was her being her star sign. And it was her being her star sign, basically being like, you know, her what do you call that? Um 
Because I'm a Gemini, whatever the fuck she is. I said that is truly hurt. I said that it's true. I said that it truly hurt my feelings since I was trying to be a friend. We talk, but not near as we talk still, but not near as often as we used to. I received a bunch of free food and called to see if she wanted some. Well, what I do, well, what did I do that for? She tells me she is homeless for real as the hotel is putting them out. She broke up with her husband and she is upset about being on the streets. Me like a dumbass invite her to stay with me. They come and they don't clean. In the three days that they have been here, they have used an entire 12 pack of toilet paper and she hasn't broken up with her husband. She keeps saying shit like he is on the streets and he doesn't have anything to eat in hopes of thinking I'm going to let his sorry ass stay in my house. She is always asking for a ride to do shit she can do on the computer. She doesn't have a charger for her computer, so of course they need to borrow mine. The baby harasses my poor cat. I can't live my life like I used to. The other day they borrowed $45 from someone they know, and the first thing she wanted to do was go buy some McDonald's. I start my day with an hour-long walk, and I'm watching what I eat. Sounds like me. I clean my kitchen and I wake up to a trash bag on the kitchen counter. Before I go to bed, I take the trash out. I don't want the smells in my house and they make and they make trash while I sleep and leave it on the kitchen counter. They leave the lights on, walk in a room, turn the lights on, do what they have to do, then walk out without turning off the lights. Lie to get rides from me. Oh, I don't have bus money to get to work. Her big-ass daughter lays around all day talking on the phone, eating and half-ass watching her child. I used to open the door to my balcony every morning and let the cool breeze come in. Can't do that anymore. They even play with the AC settings. I want to scream, get the fuck out of my house. You should be homeless the way you live, but I cannot bring myself to do it. I even have trifling-ass men showing up on my doorstep looking for the girl meaning the daughter, then they don't go places. No, they just sit on the front steps of my house. I must admit, I am very close to the end of my ropes. I just want my clean, quiet house back. Bridget, she believed she could, and so she did. That's the end of her quote. So basically, Bridget got her friend, Betty, that she done met at work living with her. Betty is lazy. Betty, her husband, and Betty's grown-ass daughter, who has a baby, they lived in a hotel, rent by the hour hotel, that the Red Cross then put them in because her apartment caught fire. Well, they finally rented another apartment. Betty got the apartment. She got the apartment with fake paychecks, fake social security numbers because she keeps getting evicted. And now she done left that apartment because she don't want to pay the water bill. That's $1,100 because of a leak let me tell you something let me tell you something i just told y'all motherfuckers don't let nobody move into your house now look this is her friend her so-called friend okay they 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 had a fallout she was bringing the lady she was making the lady food to eat and the lady didn't want to come and get it okay if you are hungry you need to go where the food is at but let me tell you something you can't lead a horse to water. What the fuck you can do is you can get her fucking ass kicked the fuck out. Tell that bitch to get the fuck out. First of all, let me tell you something. It's one thing to be a friend. Like, we all want to be a good friend. And we all do want to help some pe everybody out, especially if we know them. They are family members and shit like that. But I'll be damned if you're going to come in my home and I'm going to help you the fuck out. And you about to tear my house to pieces and ram and, and just do all kind of shit up in there. You, Woosa. Woosa. That's why when people come around and just give you that sob story like, well, I don't have this and I don't have that. I act like I don't hear you. Or, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Because you're not about to stay up in here. I don't give a fuck if you're homeless. There's a shelter. What you need to do, Bridget, is you need to tell Betty and her fucking grown-ass daughter and that fucking crying-ass, trifling-ass grandchild who is running around fucking harassing your cat. It's time to go to the shelter. And I'm sorry, but you at your wit's end, bitch, I would have been at my wit's fucking end. I wouldn't have let that bitch stay with me in the first fucking place. Because for one, if she keeps moving back to rent by the hour hotels, getting evicted, lazy, 
she got she got tax money and uh, and shit but she's spending it on trips and rooms to new orleans but hungry how the fuck you gonna buy bus tickets to new orleans rent rooms out and shit but then don't have no food and you asking your friend could you make me something to eat because we hungry bitches you got your priorities all fucked up but here's the thing after seeing all of that shit i would have not let that bitch stay with me there's no way I would have invited her to my home. If she would have said I'm homeless, I would have told this bitch this. Listen, you need to go to the YWCA because that's where they help women and children that are homeless. They help families. The YWCA helps families that are homeless. And now what you need to do, Bridget, is you need to tell her, listen, Betty, you know, I, I tried to help you. Or <laughs> you could say, you might not say it like that, but if it were me, I'd be like, listen, Betty, you know, I brought you in because I wanted to help you get on your feet. However, you know, it's not working out like that. So I'm giving you until the end of the week to get you and your things and your family members out of here. There's some shelters. If you need me to leave you some numbers for some shelters, I can do so. But, you know, you have to the end of the week to move out or get the fuck out of my apartment. Like, you don't want to sound mean. But then again, you don't want to sound too fucking nice because when you're too nice, they don't take that shit serious. So you might have to have an attitude and sternness. You know what I'm saying? A bitch like me would be like, look, you need to get the fuck out because you will push me to my wit's end and then I will get to the point where I'm just going to curse you the fuck out and then we're not going to be friends no more. But that's fine if y'all don't be friends no more. That's the type of friend you don't need to have no more. Let that bitch get out and don't fucking call you no more. You know why? Because next time she do call you, she's going to call you with an issue. She's going to play the little heart string and you're going to feel bad for that bitch. No. What you need to tell her, listen, Betty, I tried to help you and your family members out, but it's not working. You know, my home is dirty. My home is filthy. And this is not how I live my life. And this is not how I live. I don't want bugs and roaches in my home. I don't have time for this. What you need to do is you have to the end of the week to find yourself a place to stay. There are shelters and things that you guys can go to. But by the end of the week, you need to be packed and moved out. I'm sorry. You know, we were friends. I don't know. This is a hard one because this shit is pissing me the fuck off. Like, Bridget left her phone number. I'm about to call her and be like, listen, bitch, um... Um, I'm going to need to tell you that your friend Betty, she needs to act like Betty Crocker and bake herself a fucking way out of that shit. Bitch, bye. Bitch, motherfucking bye. Like, seriously. You know something? When you're an adult and you're grown... You need to fucking do your own shit. If you got your husband and your grown ass kid living with you and they not pulling their weight, then that's an issue. That's the problem. And it sucks when you have a friend that you want to help out, but the bitch is not like, you know what I'm saying? She's not worthy to help out. Like, I'm not saying that nobody is worthy to help out, but you cannot help everybody, it seems like, because for one, those are signs, those are telltale signs of, of warning signs that you know that that bitch is not worth helping out. Meaning, you know she was lazy, you know she couldn't keep a job, you know she kept getting evicted, you know she was homeless because of certain reasons, she, you know her priorities wasn't in order, you knew all of this shit, but then you still was a friend and took her in. Let me tell you something, sometimes we gotta just fucking bite that bullet and not like let our little heartstrings be played because when we start feeling bad for people and you know what I'm saying in their situations then that fucks us up and then it makes our situation fucked up and I'm sorry but I'm not about to be fucked up because of somebody else's situation like I like my home and I understand how that is when my son and his girlfriend was living here and they 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 kid at the time they weren't homeless but they was living here because they wanted to move out of here so I don't know if that's what you want to call homeless but I was ready for them to get the fuck up out of my house because they were messy. The same thing. They were same thing. Loud, messy, leave the lights on. It was just too much. The little boy, my the little boy, my grandson was terrorizing my dog Coco at the time. Like it was too much for me. So I could understand how she felt. And after a while, it's like, you know what? You can't take it no more. And then you start to explode. So before you even get to that breaking point, you got to stop yourself right there in the tracks and be like, you know what? I'm sorry, but I can only offer you like a couple of dollars and some information of where you can go and find somewhere to stay. But you can't stay here. You know what I'm saying? Like she is disrupting your home. You go on your walks. You got you can't even let your balcony open. Let me tell you something. 
it's time for you to put your foot down and let her know, listen, have a talk with her without her fucking loud ass daughter around. She got strange men coming to your motherfucking doorbell, ringing your doorbell. Like, this is the one thing I don't play. If you come to stay with me, you're not about to get my motherfucking address out. It's just like what I tell my son. Don't be having your friends come knocking on my door and giving my address out because I don't like everybody knowing where the fuck I live at. I don't need them looking at my door or my windows trying to see what the fuck I got trying to rob me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't play that shit. Now, that's one right there, disrespect and violation. Now she done got this girl, her, her daughter, having all kind of strange dudes come and ringing your doorbell. And then they sit in they fucking raggedy, tired asses on the fucking front porch. They ain't even going nowhere. This niggas is, these niggas is ringing the doorbell and not even going nowhere. God forbid if you at work somewhere, then she they got she got them up in your house and your bed fucking them. Like, seriously, it's time to tell Betty's ass good motherfucking bye. Bye, bitch, bye. Okay? So what you need to do is have a nice talk with Betty and say, listen, you know... I tried to help you out as a friend, but this is really not working out. So I'm giving you to the end of the week for you and your family to be packed and moved out. This is not working out. And, you know, I do wish you nothing but the best. But for now, you have to leave my home. And that's it. Don't even give her room to say nothing. The only thing she can say is bye, bitch, and thank you. Thank you, and I appreciate your hospitality, but goodbye. Let that bitch go on her merry fucking way. Like, dead ass serious. Like, you can't help everybody because... You know the reason why? If that person ain't trying to help themselves, then bitch, you cannot help her. That bitch wasn't trying to help herself from the jump. And since she wasn't trying to help herself from the jump, Bridget, there was no need for you to fucking try to help her. If the bitch has been homeless several times and she got a husband that's um sitting around doing nothing and she got a daughter who's 20 years old and a kid and they ain't doing nothing and she's flipping the bills and fake paychecks and all of this shit to play to live somewhere sweetheart no listen let me tell you something that's just too much drama i don't listen but one i don't even got that many friends and two the little bit of friends that i do have i don't need the drama please stay the fuck away from me with your drama because i got my own shit to deal with and i'm not about to deal with nobody else's shit and now you got this bitch and her whole fucking family's bullshit to deal with which kind of sucks like on some real shit Tell that bitch she got to get going to the, by the end of the week. It's going to be Wednesday when this video goes. Tell that bitch she got till a Sunday to go. Like, seriously. It ain't even a whole week. That's the end of the motherfucking week. That's the, that's the beginning of the next week. And it's time for her to go. There are plenty of shelters, family shelters. Google them shits for her and give her the listing. But, yes. And if she tries to pop the fuck off, that's when the police will come. You got a son who's a truck driver and he's not mostly there all the time. Do you think that he really wants to come home and see this fuckery bullshit in her home? No. You moved in with him. Y'all moved into an apartment together. Now you got this bitch staying in. Honey. Get them moving before your son come home. Dead ass serious. Listen, girls. Listen, men. Listen, women. Divas, whatever. Stop allowing everybody to move into your fucking place of serenity. Like, seriously, your feng shui. Stop allowing all these motherfucking critters to move in. Because you know, like they say, once you get roaches, them shits like to fucking multiply and you cannot get rid of them. That's what they fucking talking about. Roaches. Betty's ass is a motherfucking roach. Let's get this roach the fuck up out of here. Stop allowing everybody to come into your dwelling and welcome them. It's cool to be a good person, but you know what? There is a thin line and you have to put your fucking foot down and realize that everybody is not for everybody and not everybody means good for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, seriously, like... I can have a good friend. My friend, my bestie, she has five kids and her husband and they dog. Do you really think I want her living with me? No. If she was homeless, I'm sorry. I love you and everything, but you can't come live with me. Man, you got too much shit going the fuck on. I got my own kids. You and yours cannot live with me and mine. Like, I'm sorry. I mean, I mean, if it was desperate measures, I might. But then again, I might not be a really good friend. But I'm not trying to be putting up with all the fucking drama and the bullshit and, and, and aggravation. And that's the type of person I am. I like to stay in my lane. And bitch, if you don't want to be my friend no more because I don't want you and your family to come stay with me, then oh well, we guess we ain't going to be friends no more. Goodbye. Hello. You know what I'm saying? Like, so... The only people that I will let come live with me that didn't have a place to stay will be my mama. Okay? That's it. My mama. I didn't even say my son and his wife and his daughter. Or maybe, I mean, his son. I'm hoping they have a little granddaughter. I, I probably will let them, but it would be for a limited time. But my mama, definitely. But all these extra people that's your friends and shit, those is friends. Let the motherfuckers stay on the other side of the door and take their ass to the motherfucking shelter. The word of the day is shelter 
So on that note, you guys, I love you. Stay deep and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, share this shit. And if you know somebody that's trying to have find a place to stay, tell them that they got one for you at the shelter. And I'll see you guys in the soon come video. <laughs> Real trap shit.